हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल टुडे वी विल सॉल्व सम ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चंस व्हिच आर ऑफन आस्क्ड इन एन इंटरव्यू सो आवर फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज व्हाट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ डेजिग्नेशंस लाइक ई7018 और ई6013 गिवन ऑन द इलेक्ट्रोड्स सो यू विल ऑफन सी सम नंबर सम कोडिंग सिस्टम इज गिवन ऑन द इलेक्ट्रोड ऑन वन साइड ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रोड लाइक हियर यू कैन सी द नंबर्स आर इन रेड कलर तो सब नंबर्स आर गिवन लाइक ई सेवन जीरो वन एट ई सिक्स जीरो वन थ्री ई सिक्स जीरो वन जीरो सो वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दोज यू नो नंबर्स और वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दिज कोड्स सो आवर ऑप्शन ए इज मैन्युफैक्चरर सीरियल नंबर ऑप्शन बी इज डेट ऑफ प्रोडक्शन ऑप्शन सी इज इलेक्ट्रोड क्लासिफिकेशन एंड कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑप्शन डी इज एक्सपायरी डेट फ्रेंड्स इट्स नथिंग बट द इलेक्ट्रोड क्लासिफिकेशन एंड कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स सी हाउ इट इज डन फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू हैव ई सेवन जीरो वन एट सो वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ ई सेवन जीरो वन एट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल देर इज ई ई स्टैंड फॉर इलेक्ट्रोड इट शोज दैट इट इज एन आर्क वेल्डिंग इलेक्ट्रोड ना फर्स्ट टू डिजिट आफ्टर ई दैट इज सेवन जीरो रिप्रेजेंट्स द मिनिमम टेंसाइल स्ट्रेंथ विच विल बी ऑप्टेंड फ्रॉम द वेल्डिंग डन बाई दिस इलेक्ट्रोड सो द मिनिमम टेंसाइल स्ट्रेंथ इज सेवेंटी and the unit of this tensile strength is ksi 70 ksi or if you will multiply this by 1000 it will become 70000 psi full form of psi is pounds per square inch and ksi is 70 kilo pounds per square inch so first two digits represents the mechanical uh, the tensile strength then second last digit that is second last digit here we have one the second last digits represents in which position this electrode can be used so if there is one in the second last digit so one represents that this electrode can be welded in all position if there is two in the second last digit it will show that electrode can be used in horizontal fillet and flat position and if there is three that three will represent that electrode can be used in flat horizontal over and vertical downwards position so so far we have understood what is e what is the first two digit and what is the second last digit now the last two digits combinedly last two digits combinedly so two things first is the flux composition composition of the flux and second one is the current or polarity in which that can, electrode can be used so here the last two digits is 18 and 18 shows that the flux composition is low hydrogen potassium or iron powder here i have given the detail of the flux composition according to the last two digit if there is 10 in the last digits of the electrode like e6010 so in e6010 electrode there is 10 in the last the last two digit is 10 so that shows that electrode is made up of high cellulose sodium now in case of e6013 in the last we have 1 and 3 so 13 represent that the electrode is made up of high titanium potassium and in e7018 last two digits are one at and this this designates that the electrode flux composition is of low hydrogen potassium iron powder now before moving forward i would request you to please subscribe my channel and if you have subscribed my my channel then please join my channel also if it is possible now question number 2 which of the following electrode is most suitable for welding stainless steel to mild steel steel that is ss2 ms which electrode is good or which electrode is suitable for ss2 ms welding this question is often asked in an interview and in fact more than 3 uh, times this has been asked from me also when i had faced uh, my previous interview so which electrode is best for ss2 ms welding so the option a is 7018 option b is 6013 option c is 309 option d is 3090 l and option e is both c and d so the current correct answer is both c and d that is e309 and e309 l both electrodes can be used to weld stainless steel to mild steel the difference between e309 and e309 l is 
द कंपोजिशन ऑफ द कार्बन और द परसेंटेज ऑफ द कार्बन सी इन ई थ्री जीरो नाइन एल द कार्बन कंटेंट विल बी लेस एज कंपेयर टू ई थ्री जीरो नाइन दिस इज द ओनली डिफरेंस द कार्बन कंटेंट इज लो और इट्स अ लो कार्बन वर्जन ऑफ ई थ्री जीरो नाइन सो द बेनिफिट ऑफ यूजिंग ई थ्री जीरो नाइन एल इज दैट द इंटर ग्रैनुलर corrosion can be avoided if you will use e309 l so if there is a risk for intergranular corrosion then you can you should use e309 l see if you want to know the under if you want to understand the mechanism or what is the basic concept of intergranular corrosion so friends i have explained this entire mechanism of this intergranular cor corrosion in my cswift chapter 17 video lecture series now question number 3 what is the difference between codes and standards these two terms are often used interchangeably but there is a difference and the difference is that codes are legally enforceable regulations whenever a country or a company or a country you know adopt a code it becomes a legally enforceable regulation so whenever a country will adopt a standard for example Uh, in country a they have adopted asme section 8 division 1 for pressure vessel manufacturing so in that case for that uh, you know entire country that uh, asme section 8 division 1 will will become a code it will become a code that is it is a legally enforceable whereas the standards can uh, can become legally enforceable when adopted by the regulatory authority if a regulatory authority will adopt a standard that standard will become a code so friends question number 4 question number 4 is uh, it is related to ultrasonic testing in ultrasonic testing what is the primary difference between angle probe and normal probe so there are different types of probe in ultrasonic testing there uh, you know there is one probe that is called as angle probe there are different types of angle probes like 30 degree angle probe 45 degree angle probe 60 degree angle probe so what happens in ultrasonic testing the probe emits ultrasonic waves so in angle probe the probe emits the waves at a particular angle for example if it is a 30 degree angle probe then the waves will be emitted from that probe at an angle of 30 degree whereas in a normal probe the waves are emitted perpendicular to the surface of the probe so this is the main difference now option b is the correct answer angle probes are designed for oblique inspections at specific angles so at specific angles that waves will be emitted whereas in normal probes emit waves perpendicular to the surface so normal probe will emit probe uh, will emit ultrasonic waves uh, perpendicular to the surface now question number 5 so before moving forward i would again request you to please join my channel now question number 5 what is the what does the term preheating refer to in welding so in welding there is a very common term that is called as preheating and preheating nothing but heating the job before welding so heating the base metal before welding it is called as preheating so why preheating is done preheating is done to basically it is done the main ambition or the main work which it performs is it retards or slow down the cooling rate so to close slow down the cooling rate of the molten weld pool basically we preheat the material before the welding and in addition to that it also reduce the risk of thermal stresses and distortion now question number 6 is related to painting so basically a qa qc engineer will have to look the painting also so in this question is in painting and coating applications what is the purpose of a primer why primer is used so primer is used to promote adhesion adhesion between the steel substrate and the final welding so the option c is correct answer now up question number 7 question number 7 is in ultrasonic testing what is the purpose of a coupling so if you are aware about ultrasonic testing when you do this testing a probe is used and that probe emits ultrasonic waves so that probe is you know kept on the surface of the job 
so when uh, where it is kept some coplant is applied coplant is like liquid like grease oil or glycerin which is applied and then on that coplant that uh, this probe is kept so why it is uh, what why, why this cup, coplant is kept so this coplant facilitates the transmission of ultrasonic waves by eliminating air gaps between the probe and the test material so there will be some air gap and due to that air gap the waves which will be emitted from the probe will be lost some waves will lost in the air so to uh, facilitates proper transmission of the waves from the probe to the surface we, we use coplant now question number 8 what is the significance of dead zone and how does it impact in flaw detection in ultrasonic so basically in ultrasonic testing dead zone is a very big term or dead zone is a means important term used so if you are not aware about this concept then friends i have made an entire play playlist series on ultrasonic testing there i have explained the dead zone so if you are if you don't know please go to that uh, please watch that video for the time being the answer is the dead zone b is the correct answer the dead zone is an area near the surface where flaws cannot be detected so this is an uh, limitation of ultrasonic testing that sub surface and near to surface that is sub surface defects cannot be detected through ut means surface defect and area area just below the surface mostly 3 to 4 or 5 6 mm below the surface that area cannot be detected uh, that defects in that area cannot be det detected in ut due to the dead zone so that is why whenever you perform ultrasonic test you also do either dpt or mpt so mpt plus ut will scan the entire area now question number 9 which defect is not normally associated with tig so it is not normally it is not that which defect will not occur in tig in general spatters are very less in tig welding i am not saying that spatters will not come in tig welding but chances of getting spatters are very minimum or very minimal in tig now question number 10 argon purging on the root side is necessary in tig welding of stainless steel too why argon purging is done in stainless steel basically in stainless austenitic stainless steel argon purging is done from the root side and this is, this is done to avoid porosity in the root what happens if you will do the purging of argon from the root side the root will remain intact or the root will not come into the contact of atmospheric air and hence oxidation will not happen and porosity will not come now question number 11 so question number 11 is what type of current is used for tig welding of carbon steels so this is has also been asked from me in an interview for carbon steel what uh, type of current or what polarity is used Uh, the interviewer i think i was giving the interview of tu tuv so the interviewer had asked me this question so friends the correct answer is dcen for carbon steel you use direct current electrode negative polarity friends if you are not aware about the polarity so i have made a entire video on this uh, polarity if you will try to search welding polarity or polarity in welding in my channel you will get this video c d c e n is preferred in tig welding not only for uh, carbon steel but also for stainless steel copper titanium and other materials whereas a c is used for aluminium and magnesium why a c is used due to the oxide layer means uh, a oxide layer is formed which acts as an cleaning agents so that is why a c is used So friends with this we have come to an end of our today's video i hope you like this video thank you very much